What's going on, button pushers? Welcome to the channel. Today, I want to talk to you guys about the Canon EOS R5. My first impressions, my first few tests, show you guys some shots and what I think about it, the features, the differences between the EOS R and the EOS R5, and kind of why I just picked this camera, why I enjoy it, and what I hate about it. Let's get it. So I guess we should start with why I decided to buy the US R5 instead of the R6 and why to even upgrade it from the US R. So the US R5 and the US R6 are essentially upgrades of the Canon US R. The US R initially had a lot of different things that I kind of don't like about it, like 8-bit C-Log. What, what is that, you know? Both the R5 and the R6 are upgrades of that. They add all those features that were kind of dumb in the US R and they kind of fix those issues. like. 10 bit 1080 they added that and it's just kind of an over glorified usr so that's what the r6 is i decided on the r5 because it gets added features things like 4k 120 4k 60 uh, 8k the potential to do all of these things and trust me i know overheating and all that we'll get into that at the end of the video i'm not going to neglect this originally i wasn't going to talk about it because of my experience with this camera i found that i really really had to talk to you guys about it but i'm going to save it for the end of the video there's a whole lot of things i want to talk about in this video so i want to save the overheating the bad news the negatives for last so let's just get into the camera the canon us r5 so let's talk about all the new physical features. There's a few things that they changed on the body. They got rid of the slider and they implemented a joystick instead. They've also changed from mini HDMI to micro HDMI. So if you're looking to upgrade this from any camera that uses a mini HDMI, make sure that you have a micro HDMI handy before buying this camera and planning to use it right away with a monitor or whatever. We're also introduced a few new buttons on the camera. One at the top left by the menu button that says rate. Not completely sure what this does just yet. We also get two but things on the front. One button, multifunction. You can set it up to whatever you like. Maybe if you want to set it as an AF button, maybe if you want to do it as a shutter release, you can do that. We also get something that we never had on the USR, which is an external shutter release control switch place button port port that's gonna be there and lastly this is probably the most expensive thing next to the camera itself the CF Express memory card slot. This camera here has a slot for one CF Express and one SD card to kind of film proxies and whatnot with the AK, but I don't see it being able to do that as well with the overheating issues. The CF Express card does run super freaking fast. It keeps all the data going and I have not had a buffer moment just yet. It runs pretty quick, especially for how fast this camera takes pictures crazy. See if Express Card fits just right. Now I want to talk to you guys about the menu layout on this camera. The menu layout on this camera is by far the best menu I have ever seen. It is a touchscreen menu just like the 1DX3 which makes it super fast to kind of go through if you know where everything is. You could just touch the screen, you don't have to scroll through everything. When it comes to the resolution menu, the most organized thing ever. You can choose your resolution first, then your frame rate, then your bit rate. And it is the cleanest thing I've ever seen instead of finding and you know reading through specific things and scrolling through having to find the right one because I do have trouble with the 1DX3 sometimes because it's kind of just a list of things you just choose from. It gets really unorganized. So I really enjoy the menu on the USR. It gives so many options, but it's so organized that it's not even hard to use or navigate or go around. So freaking easy. Like I promise you the menu on this this camera is a life and a time saver because you know a lot of times on shoots you might want to switch between frame rates from like 60 to 24 or something and you have to kind of go through the menu find it and then find go through the list maybe you want to shoot some 1080 maybe you want to shoot some in 4k maybe you know there's just so many different things so this menu just kind of saves your life a little bit now let's actually get into the camera resolution itself because this is a huge factor for everybody and this is kind of the main reason people buy cameras is for the actual resolution and what they actually look like, test footage and whatnot. So here's where all your test footage is going to be. I definitely appreciate that Canon was trying to implement, they tried what they wanted to do. They put in the 4K60, put in the 4K120, put in the 8K and the ability to do it and they actually were able to fit it in this camera but they just have all some tweaking to do, some fixes they need to make. 
So let's see how they handle that. I took the camera out on three separate occasions, one in moderate heat, one out in the sun for a short amount of time, and then one outside in the sun for a pretty long amount of time. Let's start with the 1080 and go up to the 8K. First of all, 1080, super freaking clean, bro. Like, I looked at the 1080 on the computer after shooting it and I was like, it's probably not gonna be that great, it's whatever. But the 1080 on this camera is absolutely beautiful. And that is because it is a 10-bit 1080 and that's what makes it super amazing. That's what the EOS R didn't have. The 1080 on the EOS R was okay because it was 8-bit. It was, you know, a lower quality. And for those of you who don't really know what bit rates are, we'll get into that later when we talk about the C-Log. The 1080 on this just looks super amazing, super crisp, super clean, and the colors that come out of it are super amazing because of that C-Log. If you're looking to shoot this camera in 1080 and just upgrade your USR, this might be super good. Like, if you're not planning to shoot too much in 4K 120 or too much in 8K, this camera's 1080 is absolutely amazing the way it is. And here's some, like, I hope you're enjoying the test footage because I, I loved it. Now, when it comes down to the 4K, the 4K is creamy. It's crispy, sharp, creamy slow motion. It is absolutely amazing. Everybody loves 4K. You know, what more can I say? 4K is absolutely amazing in any way possible. It's a beautiful quality and it's all you really need. So when it comes down to it, I'm probably not gonna touch 8K all that much, maybe for like 5% of shoots. So 4K and 1080 are gonna be my main place to be when it comes down to it. So I'm really glad that they implemented 4K 60 and 4K 120 into the EOS R5 as an upgrade from the USR because the USR was lacking even 60 frames per second. On top of that, we get that 10-bit 4K, which makes it that much better. Just that much more amazing, that much more detail, that much more control. So thank you, Canon, for implementing this. I appreciate it. That being said, I'm probably gonna be shooting most of my stuff in 4K 24, 4K 60 on this camera, because, well, that's pretty much all I really need. Maybe a little bit of 120 B-roll here and there. This camera is gonna be an amazing vlog or you know short term video beast so now let's get into the 8k the 8k is something that i'm probably not going to use all that often because well it's just the overheating and the irritation to actually work with that kind of footage on that scale for something so small so honestly i wouldn't be shooting 8k on this tiny camera because there's honestly no purpose maybe like five percent of my shots would be shot on the 8k but you know, not too much. I experimented with it a little bit. The quality is amazing. It's hack sharp, but I don't see too much of a purpose of shooting 8K on the Canon EOS R5. Honestly, if you bought this camera for the 8K, you probably shouldn't even be using the camera at all. You definitely need to be looking for something else. If you spent $4,000 on a small mirrorless camera to shoot 8K, you should be doing a little bit more research. However, it is amazing quality and I just don't see much of a purpose to shoot 8K 24 frames per second, honestly. So let me talk about C-Log now. We're going to talk about the 8-bit in the EOS R versus the 10-bit C-Log in the Canon EOS R5 and R6. So if you are not familiar with bit rates, 8-bit and 10-bit are two different things. 8-bit has less data, less detail, less information for you to work with, meaning you have less control. So when it comes to 10-bit, you have more detail more data and more things to work with. And when I say this, I'm talking about coloring and you know post-production and all the detail you get when you're editing. The higher the bit rate when it comes down to it, the more control you have over things. So maybe I wanted to pinpoint out the specific blue on my wall right here on my light. I could do that. If I had more bits, more bit rate, a higher bit rate, I would be able to target it more specifically and really get in on that and keep that detail and make sure it doesn't kind of like destroy itself and crush it and kind of look distorted or ugly or pixelated. I'd be able to have more control over that. So essentially the EOS R has less detail in the colors and gave me less control when it came to coloring. So when I was coloring the footage on the Canon EOS R5, it just gave me a lot better quality. It just looked better, it looked sharper, it looked like it was cleaner when it came down to the color and the log itself. It just looked really good. When we think about C-Log, it's more than just the flat grade. You get a specific kind of sharpness. You get a specific kind of contrast and hue. 
So when it came down to it, the EOSR's 8-bit C-Log gave me a less sharp image, less detail, a little bit more foggy and kind of ugly. Honestly, the footage that came out of the USR was okay, but at the same time, there was a lot of things that I really hated about it, and that was one of the things about it. And I'm glad that it's fixed in the Canon R5. Next up, we have our IBIS test. Now, the Canon EOSR has digital image stabilization, so does the Canon 1DX3. In the R5 and the R6, we're actually getting in-body stabilization. You hear that? That is the actual sensor in the camera moving around to stabilize the image. And this is similar to the Panasonic GH5. And the GH5 has the best image stabilization I've ever worked with in any camera. This, we're getting more similar vibes to the GH5 in this Canon R5. I'm gonna run some tests with you guys. Now, you'll be able to tell the difference between the digital image stabilization and the actual in-body stabilization because the digital image stabilization is pretty much like a warp stabilization in Premiere Pro, and if you've worked with it enough, you realize that you do get a ton of wobble, especially in those shallow depths of fields when you're really in a tight shot with a lot of bokeh. So I'm gonna show you that. This is what digital image stabilization looks like, and if you see it, you can see the wobble in the background. It looks totally different. What the camera's trying to do is keep the subject still not stabilize the image itself, but actually keep the subject in the center still and keep it from moving, which is not what image stabilization should be. Now, if you look at this test, we're getting the actual in-body camera stabilization, and you can notice that the shot is actually stabilizing itself because the sensor is moving with your movements rather than the camera trying to mimic and kind of see, okay, maybe we should keep this thing still in the middle. Um, I don't I don't know exactly what the, the camera worker wants us to do, but let me just try to keep this thing centered. It's just like, it's one of those things. <laughs> Rather do it mechanically than keep it digital, you know? <laughs> the IBIS on this is a ton better than any camera that uses digital. So I'm super happy that they implemented in-body stabilization in this camera instead because man, the shots look absolutely amazing when it's stabilized. One thing that Canon has never let me down with is the autofocus. The autofocus on the R5 is absolutely amazing. We're getting the same processor that we use in the 1DX3. And if you watch my 1DX3 video, you notice that the autofocus was on point. It tracked so well, it stayed in focus. But with the Canon EOS R5, it's digital, which makes it even better. I ran a few tests. I ran some hive movement tests. I ran some tests where the camera was still and the subject was moving a bit. And honestly, the camera kept up absolutely amazing. We did so many different things and the camera was just able to keep on point, keep track, keep focusing and tracking the subject so well. So honestly, Canon, you've never let me down with autofocus. And I appreciate that you didn't let me down for the R5 with autofocus because man, Honestly, what, how, how could you mess that up? <laughs> On top of that, we're getting animal autofocus as well as human eye autofocus, which is something a little bit new, but honestly, it, I feel like it should have been done and I'm glad that they actually did not did not hold back on that. Aside from that, we also get to keep all those hidden features in the camera that the USR had before, like a cropped mode or focus peaking and all that good stuff. You know, it's something we don't really need to talk about because it's pretty much the same thing as the USR. Let's jump into a little bit of the photography section. I shot a ton of photos on this camera and honestly, they look amazing. The photos that come out of this camera are really freaking beautiful and I love them. And honestly, it all comes down to the lens and everything, but the quality of this camera, the photos that come out of it are super crazy. I'm gonna show you guys a few edited photos that I have because there aren't really any support for the CR3 files that come out of this camera just yet. Lightroom still needs that update to support the R5 CR3 files. So the way I have to go through to edit these pictures is kind of annoying, but honestly, the images that come out of it look beautiful and it shoots super fast and honestly, it keeps up really well. So if you're a sports shooter, if you're shooting things super fast, if you're an animal nature or whatever, bird photographer, this camera is gonna be super amazing for you for plenty of reasons. And lastly guys, let's get into the negatives and there's only two real negatives. One you've already heard of, but the other one I didn't hear from anywhere else and I don't know why I didn't hear it. The sound of the shutter is disgusting. I don't like it at all. Like I really hate the sound of the shutter, you know me. I love a crispy 1DX2 snap, but this camera 
doesn't even give me that. This is really weak. Listen to this. Really? Really, Canon? But what makes it even more sad is that we have a mechanical option as well as an electronic option, which means why is the mechanical sound so electronic? And I know there's a lot of shooters out there that would appreciate a silent shutter, like nature photographers and everybody who needs to kind of be discreet. But I love the loud clicky sound. It makes me feel like I'm achieving something. Like the camera is really good and well put together. But that sounds like, come on, come on, Canon. Really? And lastly, guys, we're gonna talk about it. Yep, we're gonna talk about it. It's, it has an overheat warning. That boy overheating. I'm really disappointed that I even have to bring this up because originally I was not going to talk about the overheating because the first time I did it, I didn't really have an issue. And then I watched Matt Johnson, who is Matt's video about shooting the R5 with a wedding. And then I was like, huh, you know, it really brought something to my attention. And then I was just like, okay, maybe if I just play around with it more, I'll have a different experience. And then I went out the next day with my with Joe and I experienced my first issue with overheating and I was like damn but it didn't shut off I was still able to record and then today actually the day I shot this video the day that I ran some tests at the lake with Mimi I had like the worst overheating experience I was like what the heck I wasn't even shooting any videos like I shot a few videos here and there but it definitely was not enough to overheat so I was super confused so the thing is my first day I was in heat I was you know surrounded I was in the sun a lot I was shooting a ton of videos here and there and that was with Marie and Amy and Darius and I didn't get any overheat warnings at all but I was constantly shooting I was like doing a lot of photos and switching over to videos shooting some 4k 120 a few 8k clips here and there and then the next time I'd used it was with Joe and I experienced my first overheating issue we were kind of in the sun kind of in the shade I was running a lot of tests some autofocus tests some you know other things but I was in the sun less than I was when I was with Marie and Amy so it was kind of just like what's going on here and then today when I was with Mimi I shot the photos and then recorded some video clips in there but I was predominantly doing photos like for 95% of the time I was shooting photos and then some 4k 120 clips here and there and a little bit of 8k but not too much I got an overheat warning and it wouldn't even let me record anymore like it had the zero time limit but it didn't shut off and I was just like what the heck because I really had this one clip I really wanted to do but then I had to shoot in 1080 60 and I was just like man that's freaking annoying so this is a huge deal breaker for so many people including me honestly and I'm really debating do I want to keep the R5 do I want to keep you know, the EOS R, do I wanna, which one do I wanna get rid of? What do I sell? And honestly, I really want to get rid of the EOS R5, but at the same time, it just fixes all the issues in the EOS R. Maybe I should get the R6, but at the same time, what if some fix comes out for the R5 and it doesn't overheat anymore, you know? Then I'm getting rid of something super big. And I just don't know what I wanna do, but honestly, this overheating thing is a huge issue. And if it is a huge issue for you and you really don't wanna shoot any 1080 or you're really on like on it about shooting 4k 60 4k 120 a lot and you're like using this camera in the sun all the time and whatnot you know this is a huge issue for some and there are you know like things out there that are saying that yes the canon EOS r5 is not overheating because of external heat but internal heat there's a lot of issues with that and you know tilta has the fan coming out specifically for the r5 to cool down and maybe it'll fix it maybe it won't i'm not 100 percent sure but at the same time you know like is it a risk you're willing to take do you want to buy the r5 with the overheating going on i don't know i honestly wouldn't but i already have it in my hands and i don't want to get rid of it because i'm really hoping that the issue gets fixed let's see how this goes let's play it out and hope that canon fixes it or somebody out there in the world fixes this issue with either a firmware update or you know besides the tilt a cage because honestly i feel like the tilt a cage is going to get mad annoying if you're just like having it connected all the time but who knows maybe it's revolutionary and it'll be something and be able to make the camera the perfect camera ever
let's see how it goes. Anyway, guys, when it comes down to it, the Canon EOS F5 is an absolutely amazing camera, but that overheating issue is just such a huge negative that it actually kind of dictates whether you want to buy this camera or not. So let's hope that the issue gets fixed and the almost perfect camera is perfect for use. The Canon EOS R5 is basically almost the perfect camera. If it had more modularity, if it had a lot more things done to it, I would label it the perfect camera, but you know, that doesn't exist. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you guys learned a little bit something that helped you make your decision if you want to buy the R5 or not, because yes, there are a lot of videos out there talking about the overheating, but I really just wanted to get into this camera, show you guys my samples and test footage that I got, because I know a lot of you know times out there test footages out there just don't look appealing like you're getting buildings you're getting you know low light tests of other buildings and whatnot and it's just a ton of buildings but i wanted to show you what it's like to use it on people what it's like to get that actual cinematic or bokeh shots that a lot of people are actually shooting with and show you guys some photos and some tests and everything that i was able to run with it again thank you guys so much for watching make sure you guys hit that subscribe button give me a like if you guys enjoyed this video and leave me a comment below let me know what do you guys think about the canon eos r5 is this something you guys want to get your hands on is the overheating issue a little bit too much for you let me know in the comments below and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks so much have an amazing day morning night wherever you're watching from keep pushing buttons i'll see you next time peace yo so check it out this is 8k raw and he's not gonna edit this at all so i don't even know why i'm talking to the camera right now because nobody's gonna ever see this